Hey guys, welcome. Please step into my virtual office. Have a seat. Make yourself at home. Uh, I think if you clicked on this video, you might be wondering how to make a future bass track. And so am I, to be perfectly honest. This is typically a Bitwig site. I'm not going to get I'm not going to do anything inside Bitwig that you can't do in any of your DAWs. Um, and actually, I'm not going to write the song in front of you because that would be super tedious. Uh, and anyway, I'm just going to play this song, basically go through the specific elements of it, and I'm going to put it to you uh, to tell me, is this a future bass song or is it not and why? You can leave those down in the comment section below. And without further ado, let's have a look. Okay, so in one of my last videos about combating uh, writer's block for musicians, I said that a good thing to do and that I will do usually um, is to find a genre of music that you don't typically write in and then explore it and try to force yourself to write a song in that genre. So I chose future bass because the kids seem to like future bass these days and I thought, well, um, I'm going to write one of those. So uh, first I looked at Google and I typed it in future bass into Google. This is what Wikipedia has to say about future bass. It says, Future Bass is a music genre that arose around 2006 in the UK, US, Japan, China, and Australia. It is a broad genre of music offering a wide variety of sounds and rhythms normally produced by a synthesizer. Thanks, Wikipedia. You really drilled down to the core of that one, didn't you? So anyway, from there, I basically went on YouTube and Spotify and I just absorbed and listened to as many uh, future bass songs as I could get my hands on to and, uh, and I made a mental list of all the specific elements and to me there's a lot of sawtooths, it was trap hats, it was bass, uh, it was uh, kick drums that don't land in the typical uh, four on the floor pattern, it was a lot of seven chords um, and a lot of opening filters. Okay, like an, an ass load of filters that are opening. Um, talk about high pass filters. And so I assembled all those elements here. And when I listen to it, I guess, I guess technically it's a future bass song, but there's something missing, some kind of voodoo that's not right. Um, and yeah, well, you have a listen and you let me know what you think. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I had a teacher and he taught uh, contract law, or sorry, copyright law. And it's the driest, crappiest part of the music industry. And we, all of us would have failed, hands down, because it's the worst, right? Uh, and he did it, the way he taught us is just by asking questions over questions over questions. And he really never gave us answers. He just answered us with questions, but it engaged us. And by the end, we ended up all passing and learning all this really dry garbage material. And that was a great way to teach, I think. And so that's why and if you want to learn how to make future bass, I think a good way for me to teach you, um, partially because I don't fully understand how to make future bass, is to ask you uh, the questions and then you kind of answer answer them down below okay so let's have a listen
Okay, so what will happen now is that down in the comment section, you'll tell me what does or doesn't make it uh, a future bass song. And what will happen as a result of you doing that is one, I will learn myself as to what is missing. If, if I had to guess what you're gonna say, you're gonna say no, it's not future bass, and it's not because there's not enough of that buzz saw. There's not enough saw waves and uh, it's square waves inside it and probably the bass is a little bit weak, but that's the learning experience. And again, this was just a throw together to get me out of the writer's block that I'm currently in right now. And, uh, it, and you will end up learning what makes a future bass song because you'll see that all these elements that I've listed and you'll kind of use my mistakes to, to correct them and make your own song that's more proper because you'll know where I fell short and when you create your own song uh, you won't have that issue so to speak okay it's the kind of question that answers your question hopefully anyway that's the kind of educational environment I'm trying to create anyways with this uh, with this video so it's not a not a long video I just wanted to play this song to you it's in point out the specific elements that I've found that make a future bass song and ask you why doesn't it sound like a future bass song then? If I've gone and added in, look, I even have vocal samples, which I never use. I made them with exhale. Um, I got I got pink noise there for a little bit of twinkle and shimmer. I got a whole bunch of uh, arps, uh, you know, and uh, a bunch of pads that are using sawtooth. Like one, two of them are literally called man tooth. Look at this. Let me open up the polysynth here. This is just a preset. Look at that. You could not get more of a saw wave than that, right? Okay. And uh, and I use a lot of seven chords, right, in the roads there and uh, with a lot of the other stuff. I got drums uh, that play on atypical times, right? And that's just, and it's got everything, right? All the elements, all the elements that I could figure out are there. But there's something missing and I hope that you can tell me what it is and in doing so learn from my mistakes okay all right guys let me know what you think I'm curious to know I'm dying to know actually uh, but also I mean it's not my genre but it's gonna snap me out of this writer's block and that's all it has to do for me really okay all right subscribe to my channel if you want more stuff like this and uh, and we'll talk soon Ciao.